What's going on guys, we're back. And sorry about the mess in the background, I'm actually leaving for a trip for uh, Ohio hunting for a week. Um, and I leave on Thursday, it's Tuesday right now. Um, before that, I actually have two European mounts that I have to uh, get done today. Uh, this is one is actually from a, a buddy of mine with uh, who harvested on a public land chunk, and this is my dad's that harvested it on our uh, private land uh, up in Lake County, Michigan. So. I'm going to take you along and show you how I do European mounts and hopefully you guys can learn something and uh, hopefully enjoy the video. All right, so here we go. Um, I've heard that YouTube doesn't want the skinning portion put on videos anymore. So what I've done is skipped ahead from that. Um, all you want to do is get rid of the skin, get the eyes out, get as much skin and flesh off that you can. Now it'll make it easier and shorter process in the power washing step. Um, then, then after that, I'm just putting it into a bucket of water to keep everything wet. You don't want anything drying out. It'll make it easier for you. Um, and then I'm just leaving it in the bucket of water until I get to the boiling step, uh, which is next, but this will just keep it, um, from drying out at all until I have everything set up. All right, guys. So the next step that I do, I got my water in the bucket. I'm going to throw some OxyClean in there. This is going to work to degrease. Uh, anything while it's boiling and get some of that um, fat and greases out of the bone. It makes it a little lighter process. So we're gonna add a little bit of this. We're gonna stir it up. We're gonna get it going to a boil and then we're gonna stick uh, the skulls in. So we got the horns all set in the water. I got these uh, pieces of wood that uh, they're actually uh, spindles for a deck of mine. Um, they are going to be, or they're being used for propping the antlers up so they're not fully submerged because I don't want too much of the antler in the boiling water at the time. Uh, we're gonna let this go, we're gonna let it simmer and we're gonna uh, start power washing in just a little bit. All right. So this is what we got. I used a little bit of string to tie the um, spindles to the, uh, the pot itself. This will help keep the pressure on the horn so they don't slip. That's gonna come to a boil. So all we have for the power washer is a Greenworks 1600 PSI power washer. Um, you really don't want anything too much bigger than that. Uh, because you can actually etch the the bone when you're spraying it if you're spraying it too close You can actually etch it with this one, too, but it's a lot harder to do it um, So this one I find to work really well um, So we will see how it goes All right, so here we go. We're gonna pull the first one and take a look at it That's what we're looking for. Once the meat starts to split, that means it's ready to go power through the power washer. So bring this over there and uh, we'll get it going. So here, you really wanna pay attention to where you're spraying and make sure that you're getting into every crack, crevice, eye socket, hole, orifice, anything in the skull that's gonna keep any of the meat uh, and potentially cause it to stink later. You also want to make sure you're not spraying too close to the bone within the eye socket because there's some thin bone in there that can be punctured really easy by a power washer. So you just have to be really careful right there. All right, side note here too is you're doing this, you want to bust these earbuds out. I'll let you access the brain cavity a little bit more. Just 
pop holes right here. So you're going to spray as much as you can to start, but if you need to, you can put the skull back in the water and boil it for a little bit longer. You do want to be careful um, not to overboil because you can make the bone even more fragile, uh, but that kind of comes with time and learning what age of the deer and how long uh, they can be boiled for. Um, there's also a debate on whether or not to take the nasal bones out. I personally like to take the nasal bones out because it leaves a, a cleaner look in my mind. Um, and it also um, gets rid of those places where a lot of the little bits of meat uh, can hide and actually cause a smell to come from. So that's why I take the nasal bones out. I know it's there's a differing opinion, but that's just me. You can really do what you want. And as you can see right here is where I get the power washer into the holes that I made by taking the earbuds out. Um, it makes it a lot easier to basically get the whole content of the brain out and the membrane that actually encases the brain and it makes it get makes it more clean inside of the skull. All right, guys, we're on our last boiling step. Um, we are going to add 40% uh, by volume liquid peroxide. I believe this is what they color or bleach women's hair with. Um, I have six of these and I'm gonna add uh, the same amount of volume of water. So it's gonna be a 50-50 solution um, and we're gonna boil each skull for seven minutes in that. Once it gets to a simmer, we're gonna turn it off basically and not uh, simmer it really, not boil. Um, and we're gonna power wash it one more time and then after it dries tomorrow, we are going to coat the whole skull in mop and glow and that's gonna seal everything up, make it easier to clean in the future. And yeah, so here we go and let's see what we can do. All right, so this is what the skulls look like after the boiling in just water and OxyClean. They look really good right now. They're gonna get that nice white appearance uh, once I dip them in the uh, peroxide solution and then tomorrow we are going to seal them up and then I'll have to do a little bit of color restoration on some of the horns because they were sitting a little too far in the water but with bigger racks it's kind of hard to do um, so that's okay I can color them up and make them look just like brand new all right here we go all right guys here we go we got the skulls wrapped that's wrapped in saran wrap and this is called easy fuse tape um, you can use electrical tape, but it's something to make it a little bit better of a seal and the saran wrap doesn't come off. So we're going to boil these for seven minutes and see how they turn out. All right, it's been seven minutes. We're going to pull it out and we're going to power wash it. She looks good. So this last power washing step is to stop the whitening process. You wanna make sure that you get all the peroxide off. You don't wanna leave it in the peroxide bath too long because it will actually start breaking down the bone and it'll turn powdery. So you really need to keep it between seven and 10 minutes. Um, it's also going to help you get any of the small bits and pieces of tissue or anything that were left from the first wash because the peroxide breaks that stuff down as well. Um, so it's a really good end process to clean everything up. All right, if she is in the light, we'll get her drying and we'll see you in the morning. All right, so it's the next day. The racks turned out amazing. Uh, I got a little late on me last night when I finished, but uh, they look really good. Um, the only thing I do have to do is touch up the antlers because they did get a little colored, uh, decolored 
during the boiling process. And for that, um, I use Minwax Wood Finish. It's the Provincial 211 uh, color, and it tends to blend all, it's a great bone color for, for antlers, antler color. Um, and you can get it to any darkness you want to just by putting a little couple coats on them. Um, and it just tends to work really well. So we're gonna get that going right now. And then the last thing we're gonna do is seal it with some mopping glow. And that's gonna make it have a nice uh, uh, finish to it. It's gonna be able to be cleaned easier in the future. And these are just about done and to be returned to uh, the hunters. Now this is stained, so you wanna be really careful with this. You wanna make sure there's no excess on your gloves before you start touching stuff. And when you do it, you don't want it to go down onto the bone. Uh, it will stain the bone very quick uh, of the skull. So what you wanna do, what I tend to do is, I use uh, uh, Q-tips for this, and I just, I hold the rack upside down. So if it drips, it drips a little bit this way, but it really won't too much. And you just start doing small, coats to blend it in. We're going to finish these up and see how they turn out. All right, and that's what she looks like when she's uh, all colored back up. She looks real good. We're gonna work on the next one. All right, and there she is. They're both done. Let that dry, and we're gonna seal them up. All right, guys, last step. We are gonna apply a thin coat of Floor and Mop and Glow. Um, this is just a floor cleaner, that's all it is. But it's going to essentially seal the bone. Uh, it's gonna make it easier to clean uh, in the future. If it's sitting around for a year, um, you could just take it and run it under uh, some warm water and a mild detergent and you can just wipe any dust off or clean any dust off if you need to. Uh, plus it's going to give it a nice little uh, shine and a smell to it that uh, is pleasant. So if there's any type of smell uh, to this at all, it'll get rid of that. But there really isn't anyway, so it's it just it gives it a nice smell. Uh, so here we go. Pour some out into this little container. And there we have it. We're going to let those dry and then we'll show you the final product when they're dry. All right guys, we're done. The bone has a nice sheen to it. Smells great. The antlers look amazing on both of them. Hopefully you guys liked it. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you can do it by yourself if you really want to. Um, if you have any uh, questions, please leave a comment. Um, and if you liked the video, please smash that thumbs up button. But, uh, I love doing what I'm doing, so if you guys want to, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and lets me bring more of this kind of content to you guys. Let me know what you want to see, and if, if you like this type of content, um, i got a trip that I'm leaving for tomorrow to Ohio, and uh, hopefully I can bring a lot more videos to you 
uh, this coming up week and such. Uh, we tend to see quite a bit of deer down there, so hopefully I can do more European mounts and, and have some video of some big bucks and chasing does because the rut's on down there. So we'll see what happens. And yeah, I'm just excited. So until next time, love the outdoors, live the outdoors, and you guys have a good one.